here's the mechanism. Let's assume that we put the charges one by one. So let's start with point X. And here is point Y. Let's put first charge Q1 at X. Let's see what happens. So we put charge Q1 over here. When we do this, we tend to think, well, nothing else happens in space. I just keep charge Q1 over there. It's like keeping a ball on a table. Nothing, nothing special, but that's what you think. In reality, you know what this charge does? This charge that exists on this, in this particle allows it to actually interact with space. So you can think of it this way. This charge over here is actually going to talk to space and it's going to tell space the following. Look, space, you know what you're supposed to do now? If any other positive charge comes in your vicinity, you're supposed to push it away from me. That's what it tells space. So the neighboring patches of space right close to this one, it tells it that if there were, if, if there were a positive charge, if ever there would be a, uh, there is a positive charge that were to come over here, it has to push in these directions. Basically, it has to push it away. That's what it tells space. So it prepares space or vacuum to do this. Now this blue arrow marks, I am not representing the direction of the force. There isn't a force yet because you know, there isn't anything to push on, but you can think of that the patch of space is now on guard. If at all a positive charge were to magically appear over here, space would be ready to push it away. And who tells it to do that? Well, it's this charge that is communicated with this patch of space. And it doesn't stop over there. You know what happens next? This patch of space communicates to the next patch that it, it communicates with its neighboring patch and it tells you have to do the same thing. So it tells the next patch of space that you know what? This is what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to push any positive charges in our vicinity in these directions. And then this one tells the next one. And that one tells the next one. That one tells the next one. The next one. Next one. Next one. Next one. And that keeps on happening. And uh, the strength of this what do we call that? It's not a force, but we can say this, the influence that is created by this particular charge on, on the space weakens as you go farther away. And I think that makes pretty, that makes a lot of sense because you know, this positive charge is the source. And if you go farther away from the source, you would expect, you would expect the effect to be weaker, but try to understand the charge is not directly influencing every part of space instantly. It only influences the neighboring part and the neighboring part talks to their neighbors and that talks to their neighbors and that talks to their neighbors and that's how the entire space, in fact, you know what? Give enough time and you will see that the entire universe is actually affected by a single charge kept at one single point. It's affected by it. Of course, if you go far enough away from this, then obviously uh, the, effect, the influence would be very, very weak and we would tend to neglect it. But as far as you're close, as long as you're close to it, maybe you couldn't neglect that. All right, so this is the situation right now. So think about what has happened. Keeping a charge at point X has actually influenced every single point in space, including the point, point Y. Before this charge was kept, this patch of space had no influence and it had no intentions of pushing or pulling anything. But now it has an intention. So this guy, this patch of space is ready. You know what it's gonna do? The moment a positive charge appears over here, bam, it's gonna push it towards the right. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna keep our positive charge. We're gonna keep our positive charge over here. And the moment we keep it, boom, it's going to experience a force towards the right. Isn't that amazing? That's how the force gets transmitted. So you see the charge Q1 doesn't care whether Q2 here exists or not. It doesn't. It's this because it's not pushing the charge Q2. It's just telling space what to do. And in turn, it's the space that's the one that's and that ends up pushing charge Q2. Isn't this an amazing theory? Well, of course, Q2 would also do the same thing to the space and the space now also has to obey to Q2 and so on. But let's not complicate things. Let's think of Q2 as an extremely tiny charge. Let's assume that the, uh, <clears throat> the influence of Q2 on space is negligibly small, just for simplicity. You know, I don't want to, 
I want to add, I don't want to add a lot of complications. So we can assume that Q1 is like very strong charge and Q2 is like an infinitesimally small charge, like a very tiny charge whose uh, influence in space can be neglected for a while. Actually, you couldn't neglect it, but you can, you know, just for the simplicity. Okay, now here's a very human question you could ask. How do you know that this is true? I mean, come on, this sounds very fantastic. And more like science fiction that, you know, you're telling space what to do and space is the one who's doing that. It's, it's, it's good. It's a good pitching point for maybe a science movie. But are we sure this is, this is the real, real uh, physics? Is it, is, it what, is it really happening? Is there a way in which we can confirm that this is, this is indeed true? I mean, we could ever calculate, we can, we can only ever calculate the force, right? How do we know that this mechanism is true? Well, there is one simple way in which we can test it. The way we can test it is the following. So, what we do is this. We keep charge Q2 over there, we keep it fixed, all right? Maybe we attach it to some wall or something, and you know, we attach some force measuring device that actually measures how much force exists on that, something like that. We'll keep it fixed so that it doesn't fly away. So the force exists, but you know, we are, we are keeping Q2 in place. All right, now here's my question. What do you think would happen if I were to suddenly magically make this Q1 disappear. Think about it. Think about it for a while. What would happen? So, here's what I will do. I will make Q1 disappear instantly. Gone. Poof. Out of this universe. What do you think will happen to the force on Q2? Pause the video for a while and think about it. Well, if the two charges were influencing each other directly, not by using this space as some sort of a some sort of a mediator, then the moment this charge disappears, the force must also instantly disappear. But careful experiments today show that's not true. The force remains for a fraction of a second. And we have calculated that. It does remain, it takes a finite time, it takes some time. There is a delay between the disappearance of this charge and the disappearance of this force. It doesn't happen instantly, it takes some time. How do you explain that? How do you explain the fact that there is no charge here and yet a force exists, even for a small minuscule time, so what? Physics must explain that. How do you explain that? Well, this theory can explain it. Because now that the source is gone, there's no one to tell the, the space what to do. You see, it was the charge that was influencing the space and forcing it. It was sort of like feeding into the space and telling, you know, you're supposed to push in this direction, you know, you're supposed to push in that direction and so on and so forth. But now it stops telling it. The moment it stops telling it, the space stops being on guard. This patch of space now says, well, there's, we're not gonna do anything anymore because there's no one telling us what to do. We're gonna stop. You understand that? And that part of the space makes the next part of the space do the same thing. And that makes the next one do the same thing. And that makes the next one do the same thing. It takes the, you see? It's sort of like a ripple that travels in pond. It takes some time for that, um, what do you say, for that influence to disappear. It doesn't happen instantly. It takes some time. And it's because it takes some time for that to happen it takes some time for that force to disappear as well. So, if space wasn't doing it, how else could you explain the disappearance of the force? It turns out that of all the crazy theories that you can come up with, this is the most sane one, okay? And it's for that reason, physicists like to adopt this theory. And many people have adopted this theory today. That it's not really the charge that's pushing it, but it's the space that's doing it, okay? All right, let's bring back our charge. Let's magically make it appear. Now, here's my question. If I magically make this charge appear, poof, what do you think will happen to the force on this charge? Do you think the force on this charge will instantly appear now? Do you think it'll instantly repel? If you followed me, you should be able to answer this question. What do you think? It doesn't because it first has to tell the neighboring patch of space to be on guard and then that has to tell the next part 
of this base and that has to tell the next patch and the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one next one again it takes a finite amount of time and that's what we see we have done this experiment countless number of times and every single time we see the same thing it takes some time for that force to get influenced so the force doesn't get transmitted it's not the force that is getting transmitted it's the influence you know something something is getting transmitted so the information you can say is getting transmitted from here to space the space eventually ends up pushing on this all right okay now comes something even more interesting what if we were to make this charge disappear poof gone well the force will also disappear because the space will only put a force as long as the charge exists notice that the space